Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about writing subtests. And you can nest subtests as much as you like, but we'll get to that in a minute. So in this video, not only are we going to look at how to define and run subtests, but we're also going to look at how to generate our test cases. The Go language makes writing test cases easy and the Visual Studio Go plugin makes it even easier by taking out all of the grunt work from writing all the boilerplate code. So we're going to first generate, write our tests, and then compare it to the code that's generated. And we're going to see that it's so close that you really don't want to sit there and just write all the code. You're just going to use the generator. As usual, we're going to start by copying the code from the previous section. And then after we copy it and have it in place, then we're going to go look at the documentation for writing um, subtests. And so we head back over to the testing package documentation and we scroll down we're going to see that writing a subtest is just a matter of calling the run method off of the T object that we get when we write a test case. And so, for example, for test foo, the function signature for a test case is it takes a pointer to test in that T. And to write a subtest is you just use T that run, give it the name, and then you call a function with the exact same signature. So now let's go look at our code. Now that we see what what it looks like to write a subtest let's go modify our code to change the example that we had before into a set of subtests and so this is pretty easy right now we're looping over all the test scenarios like i said we were, we were doing in a previous example and now we're going to just call t that run and give it a name for each one of the test cases that we have and so we can move our for loop our test within this anonymous function. And so we have the same thing. Of course, each one of our subtests right now have this name on line 24, doesn't have a unique name, but rather the one name name. So we can modify our test structure to include a unique name and some name that describe what this particular test is about. So for example, when I'm testing the case of zero and zero multiply, I could call that the zero test. When I'm testing positive numbers, I could call it positive number test one, positive number test two, and so on. And when I'm testing negative numbers, I can give them the name negative test one, two, and so on. The advantage of having a pattern for our subtest is that when you run them, you can actually specify which one of the subtests you want to run or if you want all of them. So it's a nice way of selectively choosing which to run. So I can say, I want to run all the positive subtests for this month test case or test suite, or I want to run a negative ones or I run, run, all of, run all of them. The other thing is when a test fail is that you can see um, in the name, not only which subtests actually fail, like you see there. So since my zero test was incorrect, I need to go back and fix that because I can see from the output that it was incorrect. Now let's rename the test file that we created. And I'm gonna just call it my underscore test. It doesn't matter what the name is, just remember is the functions that matter how you name it. And the file name, you just need to end in underscore test. But besides that, it can have any other name. And so now I'm gonna to go to my Visual Studio um, plugin. I'm gonna ask it to generate the test cases for me. And you can do this either by right clicking or going and doing Command P if you're in a Mac or Control P if you're in Windows or, or Linux, and then selecting, um, typing Go, and then selecting the options to generate a test case. And now you can see that it generated the main underscore test that Go file, that's because I said generate test cases for, or generate tests for these function in the main file. And so main that Go, so it created the main underscore test that Go file, and now it generated test cases for that function. And once I have this now, if you look, the only to do you have there is on line 15. And if you compare this to what we've written already, and so I'm going to do that. I'm going to select these two files. There's a diff um, plugin that I'm going to use to show difference. And if I select the two files, it might look like they're very different. But let me just take out some of the um, white spaces, these extra lines that I put in my example copy over the test scenario that we add into the generated code, go back and look at a diff, and then um, just rename things. And for the if statement, instead of 
running the, the got line where we call the mult function, function on the test, and put it in a separate line, we include, make it all one line with our if statement. Then we change the string that we use for printing out um, you know, what we got versus what we expected in the case of the test failing. You can see that our, our code look exactly like the code that's generated. It wasn't very different at all. So this is what I was saying earlier that if you understand how to write this code or this code evolve, then you can see that how having a code be generated for you is just easier and faster because it's the same code that you would have written anyway. Now, because these two functions are in the same package, they can't have the same name. If I call them the same name, then um, that would be a problem. You can't have two functions with the same name in the same package. So hence, why well, a slightly different name. Okay, so now that I have my test case that was generated from by Go plugin, I can run them, but let's do something else. I'm gonna actually delete the two files here, and I'm going to add a second function. This is gonna be a, a add function. And now I'm going to say generate tests for this file. And since I have three functions in this file, it's actually gonna generate um, three test functions. Now, one of them we don't want. We don't want a test function for main itself. And so I'm gonna remove the test for main and then I'm gonna leave the other two. Now, because my add function and my test function pretty much look the same in terms of taking two parameters, I'll reuse the same set of test variables that I had before. And so the test scenario. So I'm going to paste that in both for multiply and add. Of course, the results are going to be different because multiplying two different two numbers is going to give you some time different result than adding two numbers. And let's pretend that oh, I didn't correctly change all these values for the add test and I rerun it. And of course, we can see that it complains you know, appropriately. So now I can go back, fix those, and then rerun the test. Again, notice how I was able to have two test function with most of the code written for me or generated by the plugin, and all I had to do was put in the test scenario. And that's it. So this shows you how easy it is to generate tests and test your code in Go using um, Visual Studio plugin. Regardless of which ID you use, you're gonna have the same capability. You can actually have the test generated from the command line. All right, thanks for your time. I appreciate you looking at the video. I know this video was a little late, um, but hopefully you will follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. Please thumbs up the video and see you in the next video. Take care, bye.